Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. Here's John and Heidi. Thank you for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Tuesday. Hey, baby, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Fabulous. I'm excited for uh, another Tuesdays with Charlie. Going to be chatting with your papa coming up later in the program. That's always fun. I really do look forward to talking to him. Yeah, we always, absolutely. Always tend to learn something new there. Hey, listen to this. A Seattle woman was arrested after she attacked a man in a karaoke bar because, quote, he wouldn't stop singing. <laughs> you know, I've been to karaoke bars with you. I don't particularly enjoy it. But you do see people get irate I know. if someone like, gets to sing too much stop? and would then they quit? don't ever get up. Well, and, and it's even worse when the person singing is not particularly good. You know, if they think they're really good, but they're not, that why are you pointing at me? Or when it's the karaoke DJ who won't yeah. shut up and let the other people sing. Who Here's the thing. If you're the karaoke in. DJ, just just let other people sing. You don't need to sing. You have every opportunity. Right. Let them sing. Hey, another thing. If you were on the planet Mercury, it would seem like a year or more from one day to the next. That's because Mercury, being as close to the sun, revolves around the sun only 88 days, completing one year. So it takes 88 days for a year there. Uh, it takes twice as long for Mercury to make a full rotation on its axis, completing a full day. So there you huh. go. And there's one other thing in this little category that I'll... It says, our galaxy, the Milky Way, contains between 200 and 400 billion stars. That's a lot, just in our galaxy. That is a lot. That is a lot. Coming up here in a bit, we've got some more fun stuff to share on a Tuesday. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. Today is a special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? thought you'd never ask. It's Tuesday, October the 11th. Today is... Ada Lovelace Day, it is General Pulaski Memorial Day, International Day of the Girl, Myth and Legend Day for all fantasy movie books and legend cellopods, okay? It is also (laughs) National Face Your Fears Day, National Food Truck Day. What a weird time of the year to have National Food Truck Day. Yeah. You'd think you'd have it like in the middle of the summer. Maybe this is kind of like their last big hoorah today. Could be. I'm going to have to see if I can find a food truck now. It is Yom Kippur, and it is Southern Food Heritage Day. Is there any Southern food that you are particularly fond of? Not necessarily. I don't know. I don't know. I just like food in general. I I do, too. I kind of like all all foods, whether it's Southern food, Northern food, Eastern food, or Western food. All food matters. All food is good, too. (laughs) I love food. So get out there and celebrate one way or another. We appreciate you tuning in to the John and Heidi Show on a Tuesday. Legally, we got to have insurance. That's why getting the very best rate is paramount. I'm Jared Parsons. I founded the first national and virtual insurance agency. Until now, you were limited to the agents in your area. But what if the rates are better somewhere else? At Parsons, we shop around and we get you the best rate. It's that simple. Go to RadioInsuranceGuy.com. That's RadioInsuranceGuy.com. You know it's true because you heard it on the radio. Uh, In fact, dozens of towns, including Washington, D.C., are installing rubber sidewalks. Mm. Yeah, it's true, Heidi. They're made of recycled car tires. The rubber squares are up to three times more expensive than concrete slabs, but they last longer. Tree roots and freezing do not crack them. The shock-absorbing surface will also be easier on joints of joggers, And it's more forgiving when somebody takes a fall. Environmentalists love them because they're a great way to recycle some of the estimated 290 million tires that are thrown out every year in this country as well. So what you might be thinking right now is, couldn't we use the same technology for roads? Well, there are people that are trying to utilize this. There's a town called Alpine, another one called Perryville, another one called Riverside. It costs more initially, whether you're doing sidewalks or roads, by utilizing this rubber rather than concrete. But... Wouldn't it be better than having orange barrels and potholes every year? It would be amazing. That would be. So, How much longer do they last? I mean, um, is it long enough to justify the difference in cost? Let's see if it says in here. It says, it'd be worth it to pay more for the roads if you're going to have to deal with uh, two or three lanes of merged traffic every spring because of the paved roads. Uh, it says, I know the unions would freak because the road construction workers wouldn't be needed. Do we worry about the manufacturers of buggy whips when they lost their jobs because cars came around? So that was the, the end of the story there. 
Um, so it doesn't really say how much longer they last. But what we're talking about, for those of you that just tuned in, there are some areas where they are utilizing the used tires that every year, 290 million tires are thrown away. They're grinding them up, turning them into a, a surface that people are using for concrete replacement for sidewalks. I think it's a cool idea. It's a little it's softer. It's a very cool idea. I, I, I can't imagine it'll take place. Everywhere. everywhere. No, it's not, nothing's going to take place everywhere. But I think it's a neat idea. It's interesting stuff. All right. And you know it's true because you heard it on the radio. John and Heidi. The John and Heidi Show is brought to you in part by the Keystone Treatment Center. This is your brain. And this is your brain on drugs. We share silly stories here on the program, but addiction is no joke. If you or someone you know suffers with an addiction to drugs or alcohol, make today the day you seek help. Call toll-free 844-204-1055. That's a toll-free number. Again, 844-204-1055. And this is your brain on drugs. Police in Fargo, North Dakota, say a man got a little bit of train rash. You ever heard of train rash? I have not heard of train rash. For those of you wondering what train rash is, Fargo, North Dakota, a man wanted to get his picture taken next to a moving train. Oh my gosh. Well, he got a little too close. Officials say the 34-year-old man and a couple of his buddies in Fargo were there for a conference. The man thought the picture would be better if he got close to the train, so the men went around security gates and around a train crossing, and then stumbled right up to the train while he caught his back on the train, ripping his shirt and pants. Police say alcohol was involved. (laughs) Of course. Are you kidding me? You think somebody sober would do that? So they were at a conference in Fargo, North Dakota. That First of all, you got to just say, who's having their their conferences (laughs) in Fargo, North Dakota? Nothing against Fargo. I'm sure that's fine, but... That that just doesn't you know usually you hear about conferences where are they like Orlando Vegas, Las Vegas and, yeah. Fargo okay maybe not <laughs> that one doesn't really but you know what maybe they got some great amenities there I guess you can get your photo taken with a train I guess so <laughs> all right kids that's what happens when your brain is on drugs John and Heidi. now your moment of duh. Just because you can pretend your hand is a gun doesn't mean it's going to be as effective as a gun right. <laughs> An Ohio man attempted to stick up a small bank using his finger and his thumb to represent a gun inside of his jacket. Well, that would have been fine if he would have left his hand in his pocket. (laughs) Halfway through the robbery attempt, he inadvertently pulled his hand out of the jacket, revealing that he didn't have a gun. Presumably, the bank gave him a bag that didn't contain any money either. Who knows? (laughs) All I know is he robbed a place with with a... Index finger pointed out and his thumb sticking up. This is how he robbed the place. Yeah, you're not does this very trans- smart to, does this to translate rob to radio to begin with. No. For me to hold this up to the mic? No. Probably not. All right. Yeah. You, you don't want to do that. That's a bad plan. Here's the thing. Don't rob banks, period. I mean, don't rob don't. anybody. Don't rob banks. Go don't to rob work. people. Don't rob anybody because we're going to read about how n- you get caught being a nitwit and <sighs> I, I don't want to make fun of you. So just don't do that. Coming up. I'm sure we have more of these. We've got your Scoop of the Day on the way. The Scoop of the Day is brought to you by Wells Blue Bunny. If you want delicious ice cream, be sure to look for the Blue Bunny. Sure to have your favorite flavors. Learn more at BlueBunny.com. Now your Scoop of the Day. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Can you tell that, uh, you know, fall is here and all of a sudden... Even if the leaves haven't all changed where you live, I can tell you what has changed. A lot of the stores are starting to switch over to Christmas already. Is this kind of early for that? This it's is o- typical. It's October 11th. It's Don't, typical. They're do they usually, usually out switch before. Them? Oh, yeah. Well, and there's a company that we've all heard of. It rhymes with Walmart. They are right now. <laughs> oh, did I say? Okay, that's who it is. They are right now trying to find tens of thousands of people to come and work between now and the end of the year. So mm-hmm. they're saying, hey, we're looking yep, for people. Seasonal help. Does it take that many people to stand in the lanes you don't open? Exactly. <laughs> I, I don't go there very much, but when I do, I'm like, open one more lane. Open 12 more lanes. <laughs> I'm just saying. I love you, Walmart. Hey, looking for a unique getaway? How about the Toilet Seat Museum? <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> in Alamo Heights, Texas. Are you kidding? It's housed in a man's tin-roofed garage. Oh, okay. The museum is filled with nearly 800 toilet seats wow. and lids. Wow. Even features a piece of the late Iraqi ruler Saddam Hussein's toilet. So What a bizarre collection. That is. But you know, guess a guy's got to have a collection of something. Might as well be toilet seats. Hey, a recent survey shows the population of people in the United States who don't have an internet connection is down to just 15%. 
That is the equivalent of about 47 million people. So there's still some people that do not have an internet connection. Your parents don't have an internet connection. No. Uh, although your dad can get on the internet at work, but he does not know how to type because I've, I've seen... <laughs> we're going to talk to him in a little bit. I've seen his posts on Facebook. They're either in all caps or all lowercase <laughs> letters and always Leave spelled wrong. Leave my dad alone. <laughs> oh, I love the guy. <laughs> so again, 47 million people don't have internet. So if you're one of them, uh, let me tell you, it's kind of cool. I remember... Do you remember the first time you got on the internet? Yes. What was the first website you went to? Do you remember? Um, Yahoo. Was it? Uh, the first site that I went to when I got on the internet was MTV.com. I know. I don't even know why. You've told me that. But I, I just but remember. I don't know how many times? Well, I just. I, 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 this is from way back in the 1990s. And I just remember I was at somebody's house that had the internet. I'd never been on the internet. And I was like, I can go to any website in the world. Where, where do I go? What do I do? I didn't even know where the heck to go. And I was like, uh, I've heard of these guys. Let's check this out. So I thought that was fascinating. Anyway, do you, folks, do you remember your first website? Share with us on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash John and Heidi Show. And I'll, I'll make sure to put posts there that you can just comment on. Hey, a study from the University of Vermont finds that people with light colored eyes may have a greater chance of becoming dependent on alcohol than their darker colored eye counterparts. Let me take a look at your eyes. <laughs> well, they're awfully bloodshot. <laughs> Does that count for anything? Hey, new parents who don't have enough to obsess over can now give IQ tests to babies as young as oh six months gosh. old. Fisher Price paid child expert Dr. Dorothy Einion to create a 10-question test. You ready for this? Sure. It determines a baby's intellectual development by its reactions to things such as being fed, by dropping a teddy bear, by playing uh, this little piggy, uh, by enjoying nursery rhymes, and playing with toy phones, and performing pat a cake and hearing their name and waving goodbye. So I, I like all of those things. I How must be, old? Uh, for infants as young as six months. Oh, wow. Well. So you can find out. Now, I like all those things. Does that mean I'm a genius? I mean, it's not like going to give you an IQ score. No, it's, it's, it's not like your child should be in Mensa. It's ridiculous. <laughs> we, we talked about the youngest member of Mensa once. We did. <laughs> six, I believe, was the age. And then I tried to take an IQ test, and I scored well. And then I Googled... How do you know if you're a genius? And Google said, do you mean genius? I spelled it wrong. And Heidi said, that's how you know. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi show. John and Heidi. Election day is almost here. No matter which side you're rooting for, you now have a place to get informed and to truly voice your opinion at politicalstorm.com. An amazing resource with information from people on both sides of the aisle all in one place. Watch videos, read blogs, listen to podcasts like mine, and read fun editorials. You can also contribute with your own blog for free. Be a part of the community at politicalstorm.com. You have a choice, and now you have a voice, too, at politicalstorm.com. That's politicalstorm.com. John and Heidi. And it's time right now for my favorite program, something we do every Tuesday just because we can. We pick up the phone, we call my father in law for a little thing we like to call Tuesdays, Tuesdays with, with Charlie. Charlie. How you doing, Charlie? Hey, it's a beautiful day. Well, it is. You know, we I don't know how many more of these you guys are gonna have where you live there, but hopefully you have a bunch. <laughs> you, you like all winter. Yeah, that'd be great, wouldn't it? <laughs> so what kind of cool stuff are we gonna learn about today, Charlie? Okay, today today we're going to call Booze Day. Booze Ooh. Day. Oh, that's a, I, I can do about that. Booze. Awesome. One of my favorite subjects. Yeah. <laughs> hey, did you know that Tabasco sauce is actually aged in barrels that previously contained Jack Daniels? I no, didn't know I didn't know that. That's cool. I didn't know that. That is cool. That's why it tastes so good. Huh. huh. There you go. Now we know. And then your old buddy George Washington. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Mr. Wooden Teeth. He opened a whiskey distillery, and by nineteen or by seventeen ninety nine, he was the largest producer of whiskey in the country. Oh, really? Wow. See, now why didn't we know that about George? I know there's a reason I liked him. The father of our country and the father of the Hangover. There you go. <laughs> hey, and then, did you know you can buy a barrel of Jack Daniels? I did not. Yeah, you know how much it costs? Uh, thousand bucks. Ten thousand. Holy cow! Ten thousand for a barrel of Jack Daniels. Jeepers! 
Where would I even I don't, put that? I don't even like Jack Daniels. So. Oh, I, I I like it. I just don't think I'd want a barrel of it because you know I I don't drink enough to make it worth doing that. Well, you'd have to get right to the program. <laughs> <laughs> you'd have to be dedicated. Yeah. And then, are you a diabetic? I'm not yet, but my father was, so I probably <laughs> will be. Who knows? Maybe I am right now. I just don't know it. Do you know a diabetic tea can be turned into whiskey? Are you kidding me? Really? I would. I would never kid you on booze. <laughs> so, no. gross. Heidi wants me to get checked a little quicker now. <laughs> <laughs> get diabetic man, we're gonna we're gonna be drinking free. There you no, go. No, that's disgusting. <laughs> and then, did you know that the word whiskey means water of life? I did not. Now, listen, whiskey's good for you. It's low in carb and fat-free. And back in the frontier times, whiskey was as valuable as gold. Oh, wow. Hmm. Whiskey can prevent cancer. Drinking whiskey can lower your risk of having a stroke. Wow. Or it may reduce your risk of developing heart disease. Wow, there's a lot of, a lot of benefits here. It's better for you than coffee. That's why I always have it in the cupboard. (laughs) (laughs) Got to make sure. And in your desk drawer at work. (laughs) And then drinking one glass of whiskey, just one glass a week, can lower an adult's risk of dementia. Really? We need to get on this stuff. (laughs) And then uh, Winston Churchill drank whiskey and water for breakfast. I love Churchill. He, He seemed like such a neat guy. Well, he's my kind of guy if he drinks whiskey and water. <laughs> and then um, a closed bottle of whiskey will be good for 100 years. Oh, wow. I didn't realize it would last that long. Maybe I could get that barrel. <laughs> Once you open it, you're screwed, though. Oh, okay. Well, never mind. And then I got one last thing here for you. All right. What's that? Mark Twain. Remember him? I do. He said, too much of anything is bad, but too much... Good whiskey is barely enough. <laughs> oh, that's cute. Mark Twain. I like him. <laughs> he's, he's good. Well, you got you got time for a quick question, Charlie? Yep. All right. George Lucas had a debut film, his very first film that he ever did. Some people forget, before Star Wars, he had American Graffiti. Oh. How many Oscar nominations did he get for that movie? Three. Uh, actually, he got five. And it only cost him $780,000 to make the film, and it, it grossed over $50 million worldwide, so he did okay on that. that and that was a long time ago. Yeah, no kidding. So that's, that, that's real money. I remember that film, and I remember a lot of big actors <clears throat> in that film. Yeah, so. that's, that's where Han Solo got his start. Oh, I mean, uh, uh, Harrison Ford, that's what it was. <laughs> so. Well, Charlie, always a good time to chat. Thank you so much for visiting with us on this Tuesday. Around next Tuesday. Awesome. We'll call you. Bye, Daddy. Bye, Fluff. Bye, John. Bye, bye. My father-in-law, right there. We talk to him every Tuesday, just because we can. It's a little program we like to call Tuesdays, Tuesdays with Charlie. Charlie. John and Heidi. Are you ready for duel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kyle Dowling on guitar, Brett Gunderson on bass, Sam DeVito on drums, and frontman Duel Shape. Gotta keep rocking. Gotta keep sucking. Bringing it down like rain. Duel's new single just hit iTunes and it's selling fast. Get your copy now. Their first single, Supernova, is available now for less than a buck. Learn more and find a direct link to buy Supernova at facebook.com slash dual rocks. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Female giraffes protect their young by kicking predators. I would like to see that. You I can see that. Seeing a female giraffe kicking the predators. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? There are 31 species of crow. That's oh. a lot of crows. I just thought a crow was a crow. A murder of crows. Uh, isn't that what they call it? Yes. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? There are over 17 basement chambers under the Taj Mahal. Really? Yeah. So what do they do under there? I don't so know. They store their wine, you think? I don't know. The wine cellar? Fun fact for you, What's Heidi. That, John? Armadillos can hold their breath up to six minutes while digging. Oh. And another fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Iguanas can hold their breath underwater for up to an hour. Really? Yeah. So there you go. And our final fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? The character Anakin Skywalker from the movie Star Wars, mother's first name is Shmi. 
And our son <laughs> probably our son knows probably that. Our son probably know that, yeah. He's, it's funny because until he was like 16, he'd never even seen Star Wars. Now he's 19. He'll be 20 soon. He's made the most of his last four years. <laughs> he has seen every Star Wars. I don't think he was 16. Everything. I think he was like 17. Was he 17? Yeah. Was he a senior or junior? I don't know. Whatever it was. 17. He's made the most of the last few years. He was years. a senior. So he was he really? Yeah, he was a senior. Okay. Well, then it's only been the last two or three years. Anyway, he's made up for it. I can oh tell you Oh, my gosh. Now. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Tuesday. John and Heidi. Legally, we got to have insurance. That's why getting the very best rate is paramount. I'm Jared Parsons. I founded the first national and virtual insurance agency. Until now, you were limited to the agents in your area. But what if the rates are better somewhere else? At Parsons, we shop around and we get you the best rate. It's that simple. Go to RadioInsuranceGuy.com. That's RadioInsuranceGuy.com. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Tuesday. Ralph Downey the Third, PhD, D A B S M F A A S M, Chief of Sleep Medicine at Loma Linda University Medical Center and Children's Hospital in Loma Linda, California. Can you imagine that guy's business cards? Yeah, really, that's insane. <laughs> that's his title. He has a way to help you sleep better, even with tons of things on your mind. I think you just have to say his name. That's going to make you tired right there. <laughs> Uh, anyway, he says, here are some things you should do. Do you ever have trouble falling asleep? I always yeah, do. Last night, I had a terrible time. You know, I don't. Uh, most of the time, when I lay down, I am like out for the count instantly. It yeah. doesn't take long, does it, for me to fall no, asleep? No, it doesn't for you. She makes fun I of me. We'll be, the two of us are married, by the way. So if you're wondering, ooh, how does she know? Anyway, the two of us are married. So there are times that I'll lay down and go to sleep. And it's like within a minute, <laughs> like I'm out. Yeah. So uh, establish a soothing pre-bedtime ritual. They say if you struggle to get to sleep, take a bath or read a book or avoid TV and computer because those things will stimulate your brain and make it hard for you to fall asleep. <laughs> Unless, of course, you're me. My brain cannot be stimulated. <laughs> Adjust the thermostat. It says sound sleep is nearly impossible if your room is too hot or too cold. Find your optimal temperature usually between 68 and 70 degrees. Next, follow the 2020 rule. If you stay in bed when you can't sleep, you're doing more harm than good. You'll develop an association with the bedroom as being a place where you can't sleep. So they're saying if you lay down and you can't fall asleep, get up, go do something else, and then come back and try again. Next, take an afternoon snooze. Naps can reduce stress. If not having slept uh, for the nap, you might feel more anxious and then not have the ability to fall asleep. Next is go cold turkey on caffeine. Do you drink caffeine in the evenings? Um... Not usually, no, but even when I do, that doesn't, it's not the caffeine that affects me because most of the time I don't drink caffeine in the evening, so that's not the reason I can't sleep. It says uh, if if you can quit consuming caffeine by 2 p.m., that'll be the best for you. And, and remember, there's caffeine in chocolate as well. Next, keep a set sleep schedule. No doubt you've heard this, but if you always fall asleep at about the same time, that's going to help. And last, exercise, but don't do it right before you go to bed says, do your exercise sometime before you go to bed. Otherwise, you'll be too revved up to fall asleep. A couple of tips right there from that dude that we talked about earlier, whose name takes five <laughs> minutes to read. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. If you're a business owner or the person in charge of advertising, I have a special offer just for you. We're doing a jingle special this month. Did you know that when you put words to music, they're nine times more memorable? How would you like to be the name in your industry and have people sing in your song? We've worked with hundreds of small businesses to create their own musical image, and we want to help you too. Reach out right now, and we'll give you $500 off. Squeeze it into this year's budget and get results for years to come. Learn more and hear examples at RadioReallyWorks.com. That's RadioReallyWorks.com. John and Heidi. Imagine this on your wedding day. The ceremony was about to happen. Mark Meltz was to give his bride, Hillary Meltz, her wedding ring, but that didn't happen. Lisa got the ring instead. Four hours before the wedding was to take place, Mark noticed that his fiance's wedding band was no longer on the counter where he had placed it earlier oh, that no. day. Frantically, he began to look for the ring, couldn't find it. That's when he remembered how earlier that day his dog, Lisa, was oh, coughing a no. lot. Putting two and two together, he rushed Lisa to the veterinarian who did an x-ray. Sure enough. And there was inside Lisa's <laughs> oh, tummy. Oh, no. All of this took place without his fiance ever knowing. So when it came time to place a ring on her finger, he whipped out an x-ray and handed it to her. <laughs> oh, my god! He then explained to Hillary and the whole church that Lisa ate your ring. <laughs> Meanwhile, the couple has placed Mark's father's ring uh, on uh, on the finger there just to, you know, 
good hold <laughs> place. Tighter over. I don't know. <laughs> Can you when that comes out? When that dog would she want to wear that? Would you want to wear that if a dog? If it uh, went? yeah, you would. You would have clean to get it, it cleaned, obviously. Yeah, yeah, take it to a drawer and get it know if I cleaned could. really well. But right. yes. I still don't know if I can. You can't just uh, toss something like that. That's expensive. Uh, sell it to some sucker that doesn't know what dog <laughs> it is. <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. When you were a kid, did you ever watch Grape Ape? Do you remember that cartoon? Once in a while, yeah, I didn't love it, but well, I, I remember it. I wouldn't him. say that I loved it, but I remember it. It was it was funny. So I think that's maybe what we could call these apes in the Tama Zoo in Tokyo. They're conducting an experiment to see if monkeys are capable of buying a drink from a vending machine. <laughs> the zoo has installed a vending machine inside the chimp enclosure to see if animals could be taught to purchase a drink by watching humans do it. The monkeys have been given coins to insert into the machine. As for the results, so far earlier this week, Chico the chimp bought herself a drink, but it was unfortunately taken from her by another chimp. Oh. So, yeah, she. So they've got grape soda in there. That's where the grape ape thing comes from. So these uh, these chimps apparently. I think I remember hearing about this before, yeah. but that is adorable. Yeah. I would love to see. I think it'd be really a cool. A chimp buying himself. Where are they going to keep their change? They don't wear pants. They probably should. I've been to the zoo. Yeah, I wonder. They do I don't keep know. the money. Walk around with their change in their hand. Drop it. I don't know. So I'm. It wasn't my idea. So maybe the next thing is let's get these chimps some pants. <laughs> 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 All right. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. Election Day is almost here. No matter which side you're rooting for, you now have a place to get informed and to truly voice your opinion at politicalstorm.com. An amazing resource with information from people on both sides of the aisle, all in one place. Watch videos, read blogs, listen to podcasts like mine, and read fun editorials. You can also contribute with your own blog for free. Be a part of the community at politicalstorm.com. You have a choice, and now you have a voice, too, at politicalstorm.com. That's politicalstorm.com. John and Heidi. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. This is a program that is done by myself and my wife. This beautiful woman over here, Heidi, is my my glorious, wonderful wife. How are you doing over there? <laughs> I'm fantastic. Uh, we always t- have fun stories about uh, weddings and marriages and that kind of stuff. But every once in a while, we get some good ones like this. Uh, if you have children, you're supposed to read to your children. And I wanted to bring this up because you did a really good job of that with our kids. I read to our kids a lot. Yeah, you, yeah. you read to our children a bunch I would have, but I don't know how to read. So, uh, <laughs> yes, you do. Oh, yeah, I guess barely. If your child is between the ages of seven and nine, there is something you can do to boost their academic success. Read to them. Now, let's pause right there. Between the ages of seven and nine, were we reading to our children at that age, or were they reading to themselves? Well, they both knew how to read themselves, but I think it's just something about being there with them and reading with them hmm. that helps them want to continue to read well it says here we'll continue with the story now a new study found that parents usually stop reading to their kids by age seven when they are capable of reading on their own but those extra two years help children develop a love for reading which studies say give them a better shot at success in math and english Hmm. so they're saying if you want your kids to be smart read to them until they're nine i have an idea let's Maybe we should say, if you want your kids to be smart, read to them until they're 30. <laughs> We've, I've read to the kids. They'll be super smart. Yeah. All the time. Like, I mean, we read um, the book, The Christmas Sweater in the car. Remember, we read oh, yeah. that coming back. So we, we even when our kids were, in our son was a teenager yeah. and we were still reading aloud. And Well, that's good. So between seven and nine, important years. If you're not reading to your kids and they're between the ages of seven and nine, you should start reading to them. I keep saying we need to write a book. And I still read The Nightmare Before Christmas to them every single year. The, or night- the, night, <laughs> the night Before Christmas. The nightmare not before- The Nightmare. That one, that one would be weird. <laughs> okay, go but- to bed now. I still read Santa's The Night Before coming. Christmas to them every single year. And remember we had a power outage and I oh, read yeah. um, Where the Red Fern Grows aloud oh, yeah. one time That's in front right. of the fireplace. So yeah, we read a lot. Read to the kids. Readers are leaders. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. This portion of The John and Heidi Show is brought to you by The John and Heidi Show. That sounds kind of funny, but it's true. Go to your local radio station and ask them to start carrying The John and Heidi Show. Here's the best part. They can carry the show for free. They play a couple commercials, but it doesn't cost them anything every month. So if you know a radio station that could use a little bit of help, send them our way. Send them to johnandheidyshow.com. Again, johnandheidyshow.com. 
We would love to do a radio program in your community. Then you could listen to the podcast and listen to us on the radio. John and Heidi. Thank you for listening to the John and Heidi Show. We always try to wrap this program up with some good news. I think this is pretty good news here, Heidi. All right. Uh, There were dozens of brides who lost their wedding gown when a suburban New Orleans bridal shop just shut down on September 20th with absolutely no... Warning whatsoever. They just closed. That that would stink. I would be so mad. By the end of the week, the Crescent City came to the rescue with open hearts and open closets. When Samantha Capone, a a local wedding planner, heard about the nuptial nightmare, she called up her colleagues, quickly organized what they refer to as a dress swap for that Sunday at a New Orleans store. Word quickly spread, and soon more than 200 dresses and veils and bridesmaid dresses and flower girl dresses were donated for this event. They also helped alter the dresses to make sure that they would be the right fit for each bride. I think that's a really cool story because that's this happened. That's a cool happened. story, but... That's what? horrible. They took their money yeah. for the dresses that the people bought and then, and then just closed up and left. That's I can't even terrible. imagine. Terrible. I can't even imagine. I just had a scenario with uh, a friend of mine where he and I were talking about a company that he worked with that he was getting service from this company, a specific thing they were doing for him. And I read on Facebook that this guy that was providing the service quit doing it. And I, I said something to the guy about it. What are you doing for that now? And he goes, what are you talking about? He had no clue. The guy quit providing this service on October 1st. And he just found out Friday. Oh, man. So on Friday, and I sadly was the one that told him. I was like, didn't you see it on Facebook? And he replied, I'm not even on Facebook. What, what was, what's going on? I was like, oh, oh no. Man. Do I have to be the one to tell you this? Yeah, that's but horrible. I just don't understand how anybody could do such a thing. So anyway, this happened in uh, the Crescent City, apparently, is what they call New Orleans. I didn't know they called it that. Did you know that? <laughs> no. I had no clue. So happened there, and you can read all about it at Facebook.com slash John and Heidi Show. Time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great Tuesday. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show.